Right now at noon, educators across the state are pushing for more funding for school districts, how the lack of funds could impact Madison schools. And a Middleton home is destroyed in a fire. What difficulties firefighters had while trying to fight the blaze. This is News 3 Now at Noon. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Mark Kane. Thanks for tuning in to News 3 on this Monday. Hope you all had a good weekend. Wisconsin Republicans are proposing less than a tenth of what Governor Evers asked for in K-12 education in the state's biennial budget. Our Jamie Perez is live from the Capitol where educators and school leaders say the lack of funds will have detrimental effects on public education. Jamie? Right, well, there were people here representing many school districts across Dane County pleading with lawmakers to reconsider their budget and prioritize education. They say that budget decisions are moral decisions. Now, with the year that educators just went through, they say a budget with essentially no increases for K-12 funding is a slap in the face. MMSD's superintendent, Dr. Carlton Jenkins, said there's been a history of minimal increases to state education that's impacting our future. Over the past year and a half, in the midst of this uncertainty of COVID-19, that we were battling a dual pandemic, one of social justice as well. This budget here today reflects why we need to continue to be in this particular fight, not only just about the health of ourselves, but also the social justice issues that's going on, and our budget reflects our values. Jenkins said if this budget passes, it would be about a $3 million budget cut just for the Madison School District. We've reached out to Republican GOP members to get their response to what the folks said here today, and we're still waiting to hear back on their statements. All right, Jamie Perez reporting live from the state capitol. Thank you. It is the first full day of summer, but it feels more like, well, spring, I guess. Let's head to the Weather Center. Meteorologist Chris Reese has a look at your certified most accurate forecast, crisp, this morning. You said it best. It is the first day of summer feeling like spring. In fact, a lot of those temperatures out there are going to be similar to the weather we had on the first day of spring around here. So that's just how things are playing out. It's windy. Two, that cold front that came through last night and then business around here. We're seeing a lot of these wind gusts upward to 30 miles per hour in some spots. So check it out. These are wind gusts happening right now. Basketball gusting to 32 or 33 mile per hour. Uh, wind gusts in La Crosse as we speak right now. Here's a live look outside though. I told you this morning we'd see that sun start to return. The sun's out. We're still at 65 degrees. Winds are out of the north and northwest at about 14 miles per hour. Our dew points continue to drop, though, so that's that drier, cooler air moving into the picture. Jane Zell, the winners, they've made it into the 70s at 72 degrees. Meanwhile, most of us are still in the low to mid 60s at this hour. As we start to look ahead, folks, look at temperatures really staying steady. We'll warm up to about 67, 68 degrees for your afternoon highs. But here's one thing I want to talk about for a moment. Our average high is 79. We're going to be below that for the next couple of days at least. As we start to move into the end of the week, our average high makes it into the low 80s. Our 10 day temperature outlook features a stronger probability that we are cooler than normal throughout this part of the country, but that also means more rain chances, Mark. And I know we've had a lot of rain this weekend. We are still in need of even more rain for the soil out there. We're going to break down those rain chances in about 10 to 15 minutes. All right, we'll see you then. Thank you, Chris. Residents near Chicago are cleaning up today after a tornado touched down in Naperville and Woodbridge overnight. Here's new video of the damage as about a dozen homes were destroyed from the storms and tornado. Six people were injured and four of those people were were sent to the hospital. Officials are set to assess the damage later today. A Middleton home is considered a total loss following a fire this morning. It happened around 340 in the 3800 block of Bay Laurel Lane. Crews say when they arrived, they saw flames in the garage that quickly spread to the rest of the house. Neighbors saw the fire and told the family right away. Crews say that there were many factors that made it difficult when fighting this fire. Wind, the fire getting a head start on us. Uh, this being a dead end road, no hydrants. So the apparatus that we really would have liked to get in here uh, requires a lot of water and space. We just don't have that here. No one was injured in the fire. Initial damage reports say the fire caused about $700,000 in damage. Blackhawk Technical College is ramping down its COVID vaccine operations. The community clinic will not be opened on Wednesdays, but will continue to be open from 11 a.m. to 7 p.m. on Tuesdays, Thursdays, Fridays, and Saturdays. This is due to the vaccine demand declining throughout the state. The site will be closed on or before 
July 17th. New at noon, a ruling that could help push changes in college athletics. The Supreme Court has unanimously sided with a former group of college athletes in a dispute with the NCAA over rules limiting certain compensation. The high court ruled today that the NCAA limits on the education-related benefits that colleges can offer athletes who play Division I basketball and football can't be enforced. Under current NCAA rules, students cannot be paid, and the scholarship money colleges can offer is capped at the cost of attending the school. The NCAA had defended its rules as necessary to preserve the amateur nature of college sports. The case does not decide whether students can be paid salaries. The Milwaukee Bucks will take on the Atlanta Hawks in the Eastern Conference Finals. The Hawks defeated the top-seeded Philadelphia 76ers last night to advance to the next round. Since the Bucks are the third seed and the Hawks are the fourth seed, Milwaukee will get home court advantage. The first game of the series will be Wednesday night. There's more to come on News 3 Now at noon. Air travel is way up in the United States. Why some flights are still being canceled. That's next at noon. Time is of the essence when planning for retirement. So take the time now to make sure yours is well built. Retirements are built here every day. Retirement Income Planning, LLC. Do you suffer from ED? Did you know there could be a way to relieve ED without harmful medications, needles, or surgery? Peak Performance for Men is here to help. Click or call now to treat your ED. And remember, our results make the difference. Wouldn't it be nice to not have to deal with your messy gutters anymore? Leave that nasty chore in the rear view mirror with a new Leaf Guard gutter system. Hi, I'm Andrew Larson, owner of Larson Home Services. My team would love to show you how Leaf Guard's patented design keeps leaves and debris out so you can give up cleaning your gutters forever. And now is the best time to get Leaf Guard. Order now and save 75% on installation labor, free financing for a year, and a $100 Visa gift card. Call to set up your free estimate today. Attention homeowners, we're looking for 50 homeowners to participate in our home evaluation program. Here's what we want to do. We want to take those old energy wasting windows out and install the Eco Sky windows only from Mad City Windows. Now listen to this, you'll get special savings. Zip code and location are important. We'll put a good neighbor sign in your curb appeal counts. You'll take advantage of special savings only offered by Mad City Windows. We're Wisconsin's number one remodeler, and now would be a great time to call for a limited time to be one of 50 homeowners to get these special savings direct from the manufacturer. Free installation on a house full of new windows. You're going to be compensated for your time. 18 months, no payments, no interest. And if you call now, $50 Amazon gift card with your estimate, zip code, and location are very important. Call 608-338-1616. Let me give you that number again. 608-338-1616, Mad City. Accidents happen. Mistakes don't have to. Don't take a chance on your future. Call a powerful law firm that will fight for every dollar you may be entitled to. QP and Abraham. They got me $575,000. Way more than what the insurance company offered. All the money I deserved. Over $1 million. They really do mean business. Call QP and Abraham right now. Tell the insurance company you mean business. What does your retirement future look like? With a well-built retirement, your future can look bright. Your financial home, secure. Retirements are built here every day. Call now and start building yours. Well, if you found yourself stranded at an airport Sunday, blame demand. Air travel tracking website FlightAware reports American Airlines canceled 6% of its flights due to labor issues. That comes as the Transportation Security Administration says it's green 2.1 million people at airports across the country. That's the largest single day number since March 7th of last year. Amazon's 48-hour Prime Day sale kicks off today. For the next two days, look for deals on fashion, toys, electronics, and much more. To join in on the fun, you need to have an Amazon Prime membership. If you don't have one, you can sign up for a 30-day free trial. This year's Prime Day is earlier than ever before. Amazon normally holds Prime Days later in the summer, but last year it was postponed until October in response to the pandemic. Amazon says last year's Prime Day was its best day on record.
Let's check Wall Street at the noon hour. The Dow Industrials up 493 points. The Nasdaq up 106. The S&P 500 up 50. A cooler start to the first day of summer, and we could see some storms later this week. Meteorologist Chris Fries will let us know when ahead in your first warm forecast. Hello, I'm Roman Ryan of Ryan Funeral Homes. As a locally owned and operated funeral home, it's important to know that not all funeral homes are the same. Some other Madison area funeral homes are actually owned by corporations based outside of the United States. A corporately owned funeral home is focused on the bottom line, making services more costly. We have served local families for more than 80 years, and our priority is investing in the community and your family. In your time of need, Ryan Funeral Homes are here for you. Exterior a new look with new siding from Menards. Add a contemporary look with Novik Polymer siding panels. These panels replicate the natural beauty of stone. Plus, they're easy to install and require no mortar. Or for a traditional look, check out our great selection of Timbercrest vinyl siding. It's 15% thicker than standard vinyl siding. Get 11% off all Timbercrest and Novik siding now at Menards. Here at Mad City Windows, we don't make decisions based on convenience. We do everything we're supposed to and a little bit more. Like factory trained installers. You're going to love our work. Listen to one of 50,000 satisfied customers like Joanne. I have definitely sent pictures to friends, relatives, that, um, and they've all been, wow, that's fantastic. Hey, give us a call here at Mad City Windows right now. Beat inflation because you'll probably never see these prices again on new windows. Call in today to be one of 50 homeowners to get special savings like free installation on a house full of new windows. you got to be compensated for your time. 18 months, no payments, no interest financing. And if you call me right now, a $50 Amazon gift card with your estimate, zip code, and location are very important. Call 608-338-1616. Let me give you that number again. 608-338-1616. Mad City. Working while sick. No safety policies. COVID outbreaks. Hundreds of Wisconsin workers told the feds their workplaces were dangerous during the pandemic. But little was done to help. It's startling to me how many industries experienced this. Naomi Cole shows you how deep this problem ran. Tonight at 10. Folks, Tuesday morning we'll give you a sneak peek at this year's Parade of Homes. And we'll update the rain chances in our certified most accurate forecast. Join us between 4.30 and 7 for News 3 Now this morning. The Farm Report is sponsored by Blaine's Farm and Fleet. Well, let's check in now with Pam Yonke from the Midwest Farm Report on this Monday. Hello to you. Oh, mild Monday at that. Yeah, a little rain over the weekend, got some yard work done in between, and now comfortable temperatures to put a smile on everybody's face. I know that the rainfall didn't necessarily put a smile on everybody's face. A lot of folks uh, letting me know via my Midwest Farm Report talk text line that it was only a half an inch or a quarter of an inch, but I guess it was better than a sharp stick in the eye, so we'll take it. Uh, let's talk a little bit about that uh, influence in the market. So right now it looks like our grain trade's a little mixed in Chicago on the corn side especially. Soybeans are trending a little bit higher again, primarily because of the world demand we continue to see for those products. We'll get our latest crop progress report this afternoon. Not sure if those rains showed up in time to improve our crop quality situation, but we'll find out more about that this afternoon. Sad note for Wisconsin agriculture that I have to bring to your attention. On Friday, we learned that Jeff Hicken, uh, one of the folks that Wisconsin FFA and Ag Educators had leaned on through his entire career, passed away after a brief illness. Uh, Jeff was the uh, agriculture consultant and Wisconsin FFA advisor at the Department of Public Instruction. Before his job there, he was the Ag instructor at Sauk Prairie High School. Jeff was with DPI for 15 years and had joined Sauk Prairie right after his graduation from UW-River Falls. There will be a life celebration at the Wapon junior senior high school coming up this saturday i've got details up on that with uh, midwestfarmreport.com and again our sincere heartfelt sympathies to sherry and his two boys the barrel cheese today in chicago dropped six and a quarter cents to 148 40 pound block cheese down two at 147 and a quarter while the double a butter finished unchanged today at 178 and a half per pound and we are still in the middle of june dairy month i know that uh, there were a couple different drive-through opportunities for folks over the weekend and this weekend 
and you get a chance, Mark, to head towards Fond du Lac. They have got their dairy breakfast, and it's going to be at Leclerc Dairy, which is a dairy goat operation just outside of Malone. I guess that counts, doesn't it? It does. Okay. They want equal recognition, those girls. <laughs> they should have it. All right, Pam, <laughs> thank you. Here's Chris now with uh, Chili Starts of the first full day of summer. Yeah, chilly indeed, which is ironic. It is the first full day of summer, and we're colder today than we've been over several days. But here's the setup right now. The cold front pushing well to our south and east at this point. We're going to see a reinforcing shot of some cooler air, send us some upper level cloud cover our way later on this afternoon. Otherwise, it's high pressure that's trying to take control. But behind that front, folks, things are chilly. Check it out. This is uh, the 24-hour temperature change, and that's 11 degrees cooler in Madison, but in some spots it's upwards of 25 degrees cooler. In fact, one of my youth group kids texted me today and said, chilly? Question mark? I guess it's cold enough, <laughs> but it is It is certainly June and the first day of summer out there. We're really going to see this cooler air sticking around for at least the next couple of days. It's going to bring highs in the 60s and maybe even the low 70s into tomorrow, but we get the sunshine with it. I want to focus, though, on this warm front that's going to be arriving from the west. That's going to help shake things up a little bit more as we start to move towards Tuesday night into Wednesday, but then again Thursday and Friday. We're going to see a little bit more widespread rain chances. That warm front is going to to lead to showers and thunderstorms breaking up, breaking out out ahead of it. And then as that gets closer to us, we will eventually see some rain chances again around here. Of course, we're dry for now. No needs to worry, but it is a little bit chilly with that breeze as you head out the door this afternoon. We're going to keep things overall dry for the next, well, day or so. Tomorrow afternoon, though, that may begin to change. We're at 65 right now. Wind sustained out of the north and northwest at about 14 miles per hour. The air is dry, though. I want to talk about these dew points being into the 40s. That's, well, hold, your, hold that thought for just a second. 72 in Janesville, 68 in Boscobel, 65 as you work your way over towards Lone Rock. Here are those dew points into the 40s and even the 30s at some point. This is drier air. You're walking around on thick carpet. You touch the doorknob, it shocks you. We are certainly dry. But also, when temperatures, or dew points rather, are into the 40s around lunchtime, it's honestly a good indicator of where your overnight low is going to be. Tonight is going to be chilly for a lot of folks, and I will not be surprised if some folks make it into the upper 30s for your overnight lows. Our forecast low for Madison right around 46, so take the dew points at lunchtime, Add a couple degrees to it. It's a good indicator of where your overnight low is going to fall when you don't actively have a front that's going to push through at some point or another. So we're in store for a very chilly night around here. As we look through the rest of today, those temperatures will maintain where they are pretty much into the middle 60s. But overnight tonight, here are those 40s showing up. And check it out. Even Black River Falls wants to drop into the upper 30s as we move towards tomorrow morning. So chilly indeed, but we start to recover as we move in towards tomorrow. 72 for tomorrow afternoon. Here comes the shower chance. It's mainly to the south, but we will at least see a chance for some showers as we move into your Wednesday. Winds turn out of the south, and then eventually we'll start to see some warmer temperatures around here. But we're going to see another rain chance Thursday into Friday. Perhaps another rain chance by this time next Monday. We are slowly ending that drought rain chance by rain chance by rain chance it's going to take some time i don't know that we ever truly get out of the drought but we are getting the rain that we have asked for we need it and we could see more widespread rain in the next seven days or so so fingers across that we continue to do well i know our farmers need it i know our lawns have needed it temperatures are staying comfortable we don't truly start to warm back up to that summer-like feel until about the middle or end of next week by next wednesday we'll be around 85 that heat index could be closer to 90. i'm enjoying this weather this is great it feels good it's relaxing it's like a breath of fresh air <laughs> I'm, I'm telling the weather and i'm like you know just relax slow just down relax. this is a good forecast chill literally chill yeah right. <laughs> thank you chris it's strawberry season and the Mr. Food Test Kitchen is using them to make a quick and easy dessert. Here's Howard. You know, we've all heard the saying that when life gives us lemons, we should make lemonade. So it only makes sense that if we have an abundance of fresh strawberries, we should make something fun with them. That's exactly how the cake we're making today came to be. And once you taste it, you'll understand why it's become a test kitchen favorite. We start by beating some eggs and sugar together until it starts to thicken up. Then we add some strawberry flavored yogurt, some melted butter, 
and a little vanilla. At this point, we slowly beat in our dry ingredients. And once the batter comes together, we pour half of it into a springform pan. On top of that goes a layer of sliced fresh strawberries. Now the rest of the batter goes over this and we finish it off with more berries before sprinkling the top with sugar. All that's left to do is bake it off until the center is set. Then we'll let it cool. When you serve this super moist and buttery cake topped with a dollop of fresh whipped cream and more berries, are you in for a tasty summertime treat? To get the step-by-step -step recipe for what we call strawberry patch shortcake, all you need to do is visit our website. I'm Howard in the Mr. Food Test Kitchen, where today we found a berrylicious way for you to say, ooh, it's so good. All right, thank you. Ahead at noon, Linda Barch from the Bruce Company is here answering your plant and garden questions. The number to call 270-9933. We'll get to your calls right after this. News 3 Now First Worn Weather is brought to you by Lazy Boy Home Furnishings and Decor. Discover a shopping and design experience as comfortable as the furniture. Lazy Boy Home Furnishings and Decor. Schedule your free design consultation today. Do you suffer from chronic or severe back or neck pain? Did you know that there is now a treatment method available right here at Midwest Spine and Nerve Center that offers hope of avoiding spinal surgery for those suffering with bulging, herniated, or degenerative discs? Our therapies help reduce pain related to these conditions and have a high success rate in helping people just like you avoid back or neck surgery. I've experienced low back pain for over 15 years. I had back surgery when I was 26 and had difficulties recovering. The doctors at Midwest Spine and Nerve Center have given me a new lease on life. I am now able to enjoy an active, pain-free lifestyle. Call Midwest Spine and Nerve Center now to schedule a no-obligation consultation to see if our progressive pain-relieving therapies are right for you. Time is running out to be one of 50 homeowners to participate in our home evaluation program. We want to take those old energy wasting windows out and install the Eco Sky windows. Zip code and location are important. We'll put a good neighbor sign in the yard. Curb appeal counts. Call in now to get new windows in your home and take advantage of these special savings. Call now to beat inflation and get some of the lowest prices you'll see all year long on new energy efficient windows from Mad City Windows. We're looking for 50 homeowners who need new windows. Look at the savings. Free installation on a house full of new windows. Call today to get 18 months, no payments, no interest financing as we compensate you for your time. Last chance in this program to call. Don't you miss out. You'll get a $50 Amazon gift card with your estimate. Remember, zip code and location are very important. Call 608-338-1616. Let me give you that number again. 608-338-1616, Mad City. Those brave men and women of our armed forces, generations of them, why should today's burdens fall back onto them? They were there for us. Now let's be there for them. Your local Wisconsin energy providers and the Keep Wisconsin Warm Cool Fund are working together to deliver Wisconsin veterans in crisis heat, power, and help staying in their home. But they can't do it alone. Call to donate today. Linda Barch from the Bruce Company is taking your plant and garden questions at 270-9933. Hello, Linda. Hi there, Mark. How are you? Beautiful day and so glad we had rain. Yeah, Boy, I am too. Plants need it. Nice cool temperatures. We're going to start in Sun Prairie. Go ahead with your question. Yes, this is Mabel, and I'm wondering what I should do with my Christmas cactus. Should I leave it in the sun, in the shade? What? If it's been growing inside as a house plant, you cannot move yes, it directly yeah. out into sun. I beg your pardon? Burn. If it's been growing inside your house, you can't move it outside into direct sun. It, that would burn the, the leaves. But if you can put it someplace where it's shaded and then it slowly gets adapted to more light, I usually like a dappled sun situation for Christmas cactus outside. But that works really well, and then you leave it out there until just before we get danger of frost and bring it in, and that it will flower nicely for you. Okay, great. Thanks for the call. Let's go to Terry in Monona. Hi, Terry. What's your question? Terry, you there? 
Yes. Hi. <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, my friend gave me a elephant plant, and it's tall. It's not hanging. She has a stick in it, and it's getting to be like two and a half, three feet. Is it better off being a hanging plant? Because this, it's growing. I'm sorry. I did not understand what kind of plant this was. An elephant. The, little, the leaves that are shaped like the elephant's ears. Oh, sure. Okay. That, I do not think of that as a, as a hanging drooping plant i use that it's it's a tropical it's meant to be a bold statement either in containers or it can be planted in the ground you don't have to keep it in a pot necessarily okay, like a, 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 a trellis to climb no you don't need a trellis it it should be able to support its its leaves if if they are flopping over it's just because it's making the transition from being indoors to outdoors perhaps Okay. okay, let's go to Alan in the town of Burke. Hi, Alan, what's your question? Hi, Linda. I was wondering when the more of my peonies are past bloom. Well, I don't usually, I leave the foliage on, on peonies. I cut off all the dead flowers, but I let the, the foliage grow because it actually can take on a rather nice fall color. So I usually don't um, cut them off until fall. Okay. All right, let's go to Pam in Janesville. Hi, Pam, what's your question? Um, what's the best time to move uh, raspberry bushes? Well, this is, <laughs> with the heat, I wouldn't necessarily suggest now. I, I think it would be a good idea either in the fall or the spring. Okay. And, you know, I got, a lot of my hostas, the leaves are getting burned from the, the, the heat. Have you just cut those off? Yes. The ones that have been scorched because we were so hot and dry, if you cut those off with this rain, that plant will regenerate nice new leaves. It'll look, look, look attractive again. All right. Let's go to Candy. Hi, Candy. What's your question? My question is, I have a hibiscus braid tree, and my when my buds bloom, they only stay on the tree for like two days and they fall off. What am I doing wrong? Well, hibiscus, unfortunately, the flowers don't last real long, but if you keep fertilizing it, it continually sends out new flowers. And with the heat that we had, that the flowers don't are very short-lived. Now that we have a little cooler temperature, you'll find that your flowers will last a little bit longer. But they don't go for longer than a few days. All right. One more call. Katie from Madison. Hi, Katie. What's your question? Hi. I have a raspberry bush, and every year it has produced a lot of raspberries and this year there's nothing on there i'm wondering why it's just like me it doesn't like it hot and dry <laughs> i've been seeing some raspberry bushes and if people were not irrigating them um th there should have been some fruit set but what i was seeing if you weren't watering they were very very dry and, and not very developed all right yeah you really had to water the last few weeks Yes, and her raspberries, it could be because of the primal cane, the second year that they, that they fruit. So it, raspberries are a little bit more complex than just a real quick answer. All right, and we don't have time for that. Thank you all for calling in. Linda, thank you for your time. Thank you, Mark. We'll talk to you soon. Here's Chris with one final check of your forecast. Temperatures are staying in the 60s for most of us today. Janesville, you've already made it towards 72, but everywhere else you were in the 60s, we're at 65 in Madison right now. I'll give us about three more degrees warming up towards 68. We're into the low 70s tomorrow, low 80s to round out the work week that is going to come with yet another chance for some widespread showers and thunderstorms. We'll be tracking that closely as we go through the next couple of days. All right, Chris, thank you. Thank you all for watching. We'll see you back here at 4 o'clock. In the meantime, have a great afternoon.